I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and this time I'm coming at you with a review of the classic, the one, the only true, Total Recall. This is a special edition that Artisan Entertainment had, and of course this is a slip case that comes off like that. The back is the same though. Has good features, has about a... 30-some minute making of called Imagining Total Recall documentary. Commentary with Schwarzenegger and Paul Verhoeven, which is funny, but kind of for the wrong reasons, because Schwarzenegger, I love Schwarzenegger, but he does bad in commentaries because he pretty much just explains what's going on. Uh, Visions of Mars featurette, trailers, TV spots, photo gallery, and more. Now, Total Recall, I know, of course, the remake's coming out. By the time I record this, maybe not by the time I upload this, but by the time I record it, recording this, the tallies aren't in for the votes. So, you know, I just wanted to record just in case if Batman wins, I have a Batman review. Total Recall wins, I have a Total Recall review. By now, you probably already know which one. Because they're very close. Neck to neck for, you know, voting on what review to be next. But as I'm recording this, it's the weekend that Total Recall, the new film, is coming out. Now, real quick, right on the 2012 Colin Farrell film, Total Recall. I will admit, it looks... The look of it is nice. It's a good-looking movie. I have a feeling that it's going to be one of those films that I'm going to be schizophrenic on, meaning I'm going to complain about stuff that they didn't have in, from this movie and I'm going to complain on stuff that they have exactly from this movie <laughs> like oh how come they don't have Mars and I don't even know if there's mutants yeah I know someone will be like well, wait a minute you you don't want it to be a copy but you know be complaining about how from what I heard in the opening of the new film it starts off with a dream and then Colin Farrell wakes up in bed with his woman <laughs> like this film I'm like, if you don't go that far, I mean, you don't take out the most interesting, one of the more interesting parts, the Mars and Newton stuff, but you don't keep, like, all the other stuff. But I haven't seen the film, so maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe not. Who knows? But I know this is based on the Philip K. Dick story. We can remember it for you wholesale. I believe it was about 23-some page story. I haven't read the original story, but I think in the original story there is Mars in it. But uh, I think the character is like Douglas Quayle in the story. But here is Douglas Quaid, same in the new one. I know the, this was kicking around for a while, uh, especially Ronald Shusett was a guy behind it who met up with his friend Dan O'Bannon, and those two would work on Alien first and go on to this. And Ronald Shusett is very funny on the featurettes about the development of the film. He's very funny. Like, when he's mimicking Dino De Laurentiis, like, you says you're full of shit. What? I'm a full of shit. <laughs> like, he's mimicking Dino De Laurentiis, how he talks. And then uh, when he's talking about Schwarzenegger, he gets in the phone booth and changes the superhero, and here we go. Like, the, it, you guys see the documentary and know what I'm talking about, but he's really funny. But, yeah, Ronald Shusett and Dan O'Bannon, along with uh, John Povel, Povel, did the screenplay. And I think it's a pretty good screenplay. Uh, I know went through a couple of directors. You had Richard Rush, I believe is his name, 
Same guy who did that movie, The Stuntman, which I haven't seen. Although, I know friends of mine didn't like it at all. Yeah, another director, the same director of Driving Miss Daisy. And he also directed that Morgan Freeman, John Hughes had filmed The Contract. He was might have directed. David Cronenberg was going to direct it as well. I think he wanted William Hurt as the lead. But then, you know, Daniel De Laurentiis didn't want to do it. And then his studio got bankrupt. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger heard about this project, and Daniel De Laurentiis wouldn't let him start because they wanted a more normal-looking guy at first. So Schwarzenegger asked uh, Carol Cole, Mario, Mario Cressara, Andrew Vajna, Carol Cole, hey, could you buy the rights to this? Because this will be a good movie. And thus got Raul Schuster and such, and director Paul Verhoeven, which Arnold was a big fan of Robocop. Now, originally you had stars like uh, Christopher Reeve, uh, actually, I think with Dino De Laurentiis, there, there was a talk of Patrick Swayze was going to star in it. As much as I love this film, it'd be interesting to see what Patri Patrick Swayze would have done. I'll be honest, I buy him a hell lot more than Colin Farrell, but... Sorry, I just, you know, I miss Patrick Swayze a lot. I really do. He's one of those actors that I was a big fan of growing up. Still am, in a way, a fan. Um, he passed away too soon, and uh, I just really, really miss the guy. You know, he just seemed like a nice guy, and uh, from Red Dawn to Uncommon Valor to Roadhouse, Ghost. It's kind of hard watching Ghost now, especially the ending, but kind of sweet in a way, too. Uh, you know, I definitely want to give a... Little moment for Pat, Mr. Patrick Swayze. Can't help that I miss him. But he would have been cool. But we got Schwarzenegger, and honestly, we got a really fun, entertaining, very violent movie. So Paul Verhoeven got to direct it. And basically, Douglas Quaid, he's a construction worker. He keeps having these dreams, like at the beginning, dreams of this woman, this brunette woman on Mars and he wakes up and his wife is Sharon Stone who Paul Verhoeven worked with in Basic Instinct. He keeps having these dreams of Mars and Mars there's stuff going on Mars with rebels and yeah Ronnie Cott is his character Cohagen and the rebels want more air, want more freedom and Schwarzenegger keeps having these dreams and this fixation on Mars so he decides to go to recall place that will implant memories into your head to make it seem like you went somewhere for like two weeks or so. And uh, I, I think this film has a lot of imagination, even a little bit with the woman with the fingernails. Like he, she dips in and like changes her fingernail co color. Uh, you see a lot of cool stuff like that throughout the film. And uh, he goes into it and something happens during it. And he's like, you blew my cover! My name is not Quaid. And he's like, oh shit, you know, what's going on? Well, of course, it's part of his ego trip. His ego trip that he wanted to be Secret Service. It's like, no, we haven't implanted it yet. And this is where it starts. You have the sort of two movies going on, however you want to interpret. On one hand, throughout the film, you can think that this is all part of his dream because he went in for implants and the salesman says, your brain will not tell the difference. And the plan he wants is, he picked a woman, it was brunette, and even before he sleeps, you see the picture, and it looks just like Rachel Tickerton, the Melina, the woman, looks just like her. And about how he'll be a Secret Service agent, he'll save the day, and all this stuff. Uh, so you can say, okay, it's part. the whole film is part of his dream. Even the final shot where you know, Arnold goes, I just have a terrible thought. You know, what if this is a dream? And she goes, kiss me before you wake up. And yeah, that sort of dream um, motif that Jerry Goldsmith has. Uh, du, 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 du. So even by the end of the film, it's either he saved the day, he's okay, or he has a dream, and then by the end, he's lobotomized. So I'm sure if Terry Dillon directed it, it would have been fucking lobotomized. Just like Brazil, and like most of Terry Dillon films are like depressing-ass endings, even Time Bandits. So if it was Terry Young, you would have gone with that. But Paul Verhoeven, thought that was a smart idea. You kept it ambiguous. But I like to think it was all for real. 
but uh, well, it's not real, but uh, you have that notion. I thought it, the screenplay did smarter than average screenplay, and people maybe give it credit for. But Arnold, after that, the people say, you know, get him out of here, make him forget about us and being here at Recall. And then his buddy from construction comes by with some guys, and they're talking to him, say, oh, you, you blabbed about Mars, and he doesn't know what they're talking about. And Arnold kicks their ass, like, he hits a guy, when he hits a guy in the face, like a spurt of blood. Uh, when people get shot, it's like big fucking bullet squibs. Like, they're tearing apart. Like, you see, like, chunks of flesh, and I miss that nowadays. I really miss that. Not because I'm a sicko, but I miss those practical effects, because that, I think that's more responsible than just, oh, I got hit and I fall down, and there's no, there's no reaction. It makes it seem like it's safe. But here it's like, it's ugly, it's disgusting. Ooh, you don't want to do it because it's it. So I, I think that's probably more responsible. Because you see the effect of what happens when you do that. It's not nice, it's ugly. But because there's a movie, you go, ooh, shit, you know. And, you know, he's cracking necks and bones. And then that reaction, like, holy shit, what did I do? And he goes to Sharon Stone. And then someone, one thing leads to another, and he's being attacked. And he realizes Sharon Stone, his wife, attacking him. And you get a really fun sequence. Uh, the fight. And Sharon Stone is great in this. I think she did a wonderful job in this role. As the wife. You know, slicing them with a knife like across the chest. And uh, he gets the hell out of there. And you have Michael Ironside as Richter. This guy who, you could tell him and Sharon Stone had a thing going on. And they're following... Arnold, and you just have a lot of fun sequences. You have the scene with the X-ray uh, hallway, and when he goes through, he realizes, oh shit, he still has the gun, and oh wait, he's got a gun, get him! And like the skeleton looking around and crashing through the screen. I thought that was a really exhilarating sequence. The chase scene that goes up down into the subway. Uh, you have the sequence where. You have the Johnny Cab, which I thought was a great... Special Fest by Rob Bottin. Wonderful job. I mean, so much of won an Oscar for Special Fest. And just, like, the Johnny Cab, which actually the voice of Johnny Cab is uh, Robert Picardo. Robert, Robert Picardo has been in a lot of stuff, like, with Joe Dante, like, The Howling. Uh, he's in one of the Star Trek TV series. Look at Robert Picardo. He's been in a lot of stuff, and he's actually the voice of Johnny Cab. And I thought that was a cool invention, where you have this machine that drives you around but then you you do have a figure there so that it doesn't wear people out there there's no one driving so I guess it's I can see companies doing that like even though it's a machine it gives you a human type face to give you more relaxed uh, I love like it's asking for a destination Arnold sees the bad guys coming going shit shit I do not know that destination it is Arnold just rips the fucking thing now drives it himself and then went after he's like Oh, the fair is, blah, blah, blah. And Arnold's like, sue me, dickhead. And the thing, like, gets pissed and tries to run him off and but blows itself up. <laughs> you just have a lot of fun stuff. Like, uh, you have this mysterious guy giving him a suitcase, and then this woman tries to steal it. He's like, this is mine. And the old woman's like, fuck you, asshole. And Arnold's like, <laughs> it's a little bow. It has a good sense of humor to it as well. And like great special fest, like you have that scene where it goes right into his nose and it pulls out the biggest booger you ever seen. And really, but you know the tracking device. And he actually puts in a chart when feeds it to the rats. And I always remember like, because he opens the suitcase and there's himself as Hauser. Something about how Cohadian had uh, erased your memory, and I was working on one side, but I turned to the rebels. You need to help them. You know, get your Astamas. You know, get your Astamas. Get your Astamas. <laughs> it's just a lot of entertainment value in this film. Uh, this is like, they use a lot of model work. This is before they start using more CGI and stuff. And uh, it, it's it's sad in a way that they don't do that all the time nowadays. They still sometimes do. Like Independence Day did, 96. and You still find films that do it, but I prefer it more than just 
all CGI. It's just a preference, personal preference. And I think the models still work well. I think Rob Bottin's work is very wonderful. I mean, the same guy who did John Carmen's The Thing. You know, the guy is a great makeup effects. And I don't know what the guy's been doing lately, Rob Bottin. I don't know if he retired. I don't know if he's doing something I just don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, he meets uh, Benny the cab driver. Oh, I got five kids to feed. And he found out later on he is a mutant. He has this wicked looking arm. I thought really well done. He meets up with uh, Melina, played by Rachel Tipleton, who was in uh, Con Air. She was in Con Air among other films. And one thing leads to another, and, you know, she doesn't believe him. She kicks him out. And you have a really wonderful scene where, again, it brings that idea is he really dreaming? Or is this real? We have this doctor guy saying, no, I was put in here because what happens is he had a, a breakdown. He had a schizo breakdown. And it's funny, like, so from time to time, they tell you the whole story that's going to happen. Like, uh, before they implant a recall, someone goes, oh, that's a new one, Blue Skies on Mars. Or, and really, uh, this doctor kind of tells his whole story, like, Come on, what's more realistic? That you're a construction worker that had a problem, which has happened once before, or more than once before, or you're this invincible secret agent. And, you know, if you take this pill, and if you don't, you, if you kill me, then you don't go through all this stuff. You wouldn't become Goyen's bosom bodies. Bosom buddy, which actually happens in a way. You'll, you'll save the world, and then after that you'll be lobotomized. So he's not sure, and even Sharon Stone's there. And very convincing argument, but he takes the pill, but he looks and he sees a drip of sweat coming down. And I guess you could say, is he imagining it, or is the guy sweating because he's nervous because um, this isn't really a dream, he can really die. So of course Arl shoots him in the head and spits it back. And, but he gets the ass, his ass kit. Rachel Tudor then helps him, and you have that great scene where her and Sharon Stone fight. Arnold stops it, and she's like, "Come on, you don't want to shoot me, do you? We're married." <laughs> Consider that a divorce. I mean, it's just like harsh but funny. It is a really entertaining mix. I mean, then they both escape, and they. They have a chase scene while they get in a cab. They get to Quato. They meet the, the rebels and they meet Quato, who is played by actor Marshall Bell. He's been in a lot of films like Virus, Starship Troopers. Marshall Bell's been in a few films. And I like the design. Like, oh, of course, how could I forget way before that uh, him dressing up as the woman? But you don't know that yet because there's a bigger woman. And, you know, they're like, how long are you staying? And she goes, two weeks. And I think they go, like, what kind of plants or do you have any food or plants? And they go, two weeks. And they're like, what? Two weeks. And then it starts messing up. And then you have this cool affair where it opens up. And then Arnold puts it up and puts back together. Throws it to them and it's a bomb. And a really well done, fun sequence. There's a little, there's a little technical error, which I'll get into that. But, I mean, how could I forget that two weeks? Which they do that in the remake. Because you see a woman that looks just like that. But then they cut to, oh, there's Colin Farrell actually behind her. And it has this thing that, you know, looks like other guys, other people. And I, I don't know which annoys me more. If they did go with the woman or if it's, oh, yeah, ha, ha. You know, how clever. You have the, the fat lady and then it's, oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's clever or just annoying. I'm leaning more towards annoying. Uh, it really, uh, that's just me though. But like I was saying before, like they, I love the Quato creature, where it's actually Marshall Bell, but like this creature and the mutants. There's mutants on Mars because the domes are really uh, fucked up and the rays can get in easily. So some people are mutants and they can be kind of deal with psychic ability. And finds out what's actually deep in uh, Quaid's mind that Cohadian will be fucked over with. 
And you find out there's actually a reactor that maybe aliens or something put there and it can give Mars air. But the bad guys get in, Benny the cab driver is actually a two-faced some bitch, and they kill Quato. And uh, God, how could I almost forget way back when when they're chasing Douglas Quaid? One of the craziest scenes in the movie, the escalator sequence. I can't do a review without that. Tarball ultra violence. It's fucking. Not only that, the three titty lady. I mean, there's just so many great things about the. You have a mutant that has three titties, and now, oh, we don't put in the new one, but it's PG 13, so more than likely it's going to be just her with a bra. Or maybe it's a post, like, you know, with a shirt over or something. But you need three titties. We're pretty well done. I'm fine with that. And then the escalator, like this guy being used as a shield, he's just being ripped to pieces. He goes over here, two, 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 two. Goes here, two, 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 Like, just, this guy's like fucking meat grinder, man. <laughs> Holy shit. It was crazy. It's just over the top violence that I miss in movies. And I miss in action movies because it's just like, holy shit. He just fucking like a rag doll now. I, I love it. I, I sound sick, but I love it. But, you know, Benny's a two-faced prick, and um, I love, like, when they get to Colhagen, and, you know, Arnold says, fuck you. And then they find out that uh, Hauser really was working with Colhagen, kind of like what the doctor said, that you guys would be bosom buddies. Uh, that Hauser, Arnold's old persona, they wiped his head so that they can be the perfect mole. And... But they fucked with Arnold, and he'll be back because they put him and Melina in, like, really cool-looking machines with, like, these things. He fucking rips it out. He shoves it into a guy's neck. He hits one in the face, gets something, jams it right into a guy, like, through his nose and out of his ass. Well, his head. And they get the shit out of people. Uh, then you have, like, they're trying to get to the reactor, and there's Benny with one of those big mole-type uh, drills and Arnold gets that little drill hey Benny screw you <laughs> big old chunk out of him <laughs> like you know, man, I miss that movies and they find it and then they get to the bad guys led by Mike Ironside and then you have that tracking not tracking but that uh, hologram so it, people think they're shooting at Arnold it's not really him he's laughing he shoots to shout and again people get shot big bloody bullet squibs that you don't see anymore and I don't understand it I don't get it and you know people say oh you know it costs too much come on really they would all people get hurt well you can't rectify you can't build upon it that sounds strange but either way uh, but you have a funny bit where he's laughing. <laughs> you think this is the real Quaid? It is. <laughs> People who know the movie. I mean, you guys know what the movie's about, so I don't know why I'm describing the movie, but I'm just describing scenes that I just had fun with. You have the fight with Richter, Michael Ironside, and at least to, you know, get his arms taken off, and Arnold throws him, like, see you at the party, Richter! <laughs> and he, uh... Finally gets to the machine. Mark Ryan's, I mean, uh, Ryan Cow's about to kill him, but Molina shoots him. Is that device that he puts in and gives Mars air. And then you have that scene where, you know, kiss me before you wake up. And then it's that decision. Is it, was it a dream? Is it real? I don't have many problems with the film. I mean, probably three little technical problems I gotta mention, because I, I can't really defend them. <laughs> I can't. Technical problem one, let me see if I remember them. The least of my worries of the three, but you can still notice the scene with the woman, he has the, the face, when it opens up and he lifts it, you can tell that it's a it's a sort of a puppet amount of Arnold. Because the way he moves is like, like it's, it's very like, Like, it's not natural. Like, you tell that it's a, a puppet. You know, better than, like, in Terminator, one with the eye, but you can still tell it's a special fat and not really Arnold. So, they did the best they could, especially in 1990, you know, Rapportine. Um, But I'm just saying, you can, you can tell. 
Um, but the other two that even more so is uh, what was it? I'm trying to remember now. Um, well, well, one being when he has the hologram and the bad guys are shooting. Well, the thing is, here's the hologram and here's the bad guys and they're shooting. Now, the bullets would pass through the hologram. So really, the bad guys would be killing each other and shooting each other. So that was kind of fucked up. Like, if you have a hologram, they're shooting this way, they're shooting this way. They should be shooting each other. You know? But they don't. So you're like, what's that about? Um, and the third thing, the, the most important, the biggest one is, I can't defend this. When you, when they... They touch on it at the beginning of the film, and then they do at the at the end when Arnold, like, the thing blows up, air is being put into the mountain and Mars, but Roddy Cos comes out and his body, you know, eyes are bulging out. Well, then Arnold and Rachel Tekin, they go out and their their eyes are popping out. I can't defend that because it's good makeup effects, but the fact that okay they did air and then they the eyeballs are like this far out and they go right back in. And then they're fine. They're perfectly fine. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's my eyeball going out. And then it goes back in and I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> I, I don't think you'd be perfectly fine. I think by the time your eyeball is that far, I think you're going to be dead. You know, like, I, I don't think your eyeball is going to pop right back in. I, I don't think, I don't think it works. <laughs> watch, it's hard to watch that scene without, like, what were they thinking, man? <laughs> That's stupid and silly. The fucking eyeball pop. That that's stupid. That's just, I can't defend that. I can't. I love the film, but how can you defend the eyeball pop? <laughs> I know it's not that funny to others, but I'm like, what the fuck was that? Who thought of that? How you? Uh, but that's a nitpick. But it's, just, it's been pretty big because it's the ending of the movie. But I'm like, you're dead if your eyeball's popping that much. But those are like three little technical nitpicks or little... But other than that, I thought it was a really... The film went by fast. It's uh, almost two hours. I thought it went by fast. I thought it was a very interesting plot. This idea of, you know, is it a dream or is it reality? And even if you believe in the reality, that's an interesting story of itself about a guy who... He has no memory, and he gets his memories re reawakened. But then it's only somewhat, so he knows he can do stuff, but he doesn't remember anything else. And then the the mind fuck of, well, your previous self did that on purpose to be a perfect mole. And that was a really interesting idea. I thought the budget was well used, with the with the scenes like you know the X-ray and seeing all he has a gun and jumping through or. Uh, the creature of Quato and, you know, Benny's arm. And I thought you had some fun action sequences, like the big drill thing and, you know, screw you. The shootouts like at the escalator where the guy just turns into a hamburger as he use, Arnold's using him as a shield. Because the guy got shot dead and so uses the dead body as a shield. Might as well, he's dead. Uh... You know, memorable lines. See you at the party with the screw you. You know, consider that divorce. I can't do Arnold accent, but very and the supporting cast. Michael Ironside is a great villain. He's always a great villain. Even in Watchers with Corey Haim, he's scarier than the monster in that movie. But I love Watchers, and I love Michael Ironside as a villain. He would be in Starship Troopers as well. I think Michael uh, Ironside was going to be Robocop, but he couldn't fit in the suit, so that didn't ha happen. So he used him in uh, this film, Paul Verhoeven. Um, Ronnie Cox, you know, he's the bad guy, Robocop, he's the bad guy here. He works well. Score by Jerry Goldsmith, I like the score by Jerry Goldsmith. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites, but, you know, do 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 I can't do a good job, but... That was a pretty good score by Jerry Goldsmith. I think he had very solid special effects that a lot of people hamper on nowadays, but I don't really understand. I don't think it deserves that much hampering, that much... Uh, people kind of shit on the special effects in this movie. I don't really understand that. I think they work. 
and uh, the R-rated violence is. Uh, I know this got an X rating, so they even even with how violent this is, they had to tone stuff back. It's too bad they didn't have the unrated version for shits and giggles. You know, probably not tons of stuff, but you know, they did for Robocop, so why not Total Recall? Uh, great special effects, great ideas, like the whole idea with the the you know the up the nose and this tracking device. The, even a little bits like the fingernail, the quato, the x-ray, uh, big body count, a lot of action, gory special effects. I think Schwarzenegger does a great job as the Sharon Stone, Re uh, Rachel Tickerton. Everybody does a great job cast-wise. They had the money behind it, so they... Actually, the guys who did the screenplay was Ronald Shusett, Dan O'Bannon, and Gary Goldman. John Pavel just worked on the story, but screenplay was Ronald Shusa, Dan O'Ban, and Gary Goldman. And yeah, this was released by Caracol, and when it came out, it was a big box office hit, and it deserves it. And it's nice to have the special edition DVD, it deserves that as well. Uh, this won't touch the new one. I just, I know it won't touch the new one, because I have a feeling when I watch that film, and be like, why don't I just watch this again? I'm seeing the same or similar sequences. But I think it was done better in this. And it's R-rated. It looks like they had more fun um, in this movie than they are in the new one. And Colin Farrell, I'm not the biggest fan of Colin Farrell. And Lynn Wiseman, he could be a capable director, but I don't know. I just, but it wasn't a movie that needed remaking. And the only difference you have is there's no Mars and there's no mutants. Maybe there are mutants, but not that I know of. And I'm like, that's not really the best thing, but that's the only thing that you're differentiating on. Is that instead, of no Mars, no Mutant. I don't know. I mean, it just... It's a good-looking movie, but it has a $200 million budget. I hope it looks good. It should. But that doesn't save a movie. There's a lot more to it. I think the cast works. The story does work. It's a lot of fun. Entertaining. And very well done, in my opinion. Total Recall is a great movie, so I don't know what more I can say, but the screw you! <laughs> but either way, uh, thanks for watching, take care, and I personally don't think the remake is going to make a lot of money. It'll probably get number one box office, but it has a $200 million budget. I don't think it's going to make $200 million in the U.S. I think it may follow this shape of, like, Battleship. Where even if it makes like a hundred and some million in the U.S., it's going to need a lot overseas to make up not only the budget but for profit. I don't think it's going to make a lot of money in the U.S., but that's just my opinion. Um, but we'll see. I could be wrong. So either way, thanks for watching. Take care. Later.